Welcome back to Let's Play Kirby's Dream Course. Yeah, I know this is a bit of an unusual setup, but trust me, there's a reason for it. So, in the previous episode, we finished course number eight, sort of, then we fought King DDD in the only boss fight of the game, and finally returned the stars to the night sky dreamland so its inhabitants can sleep peacefully. But, as I mentioned at the end, it's not the end. You see, Kirby's Dream Course follows the Kirby series tradition of... Ooh, got worried there. Follows the Kirby series tradition. Is that going to go in? No. It, for the third time, follows the Kirby series tradition of including an extra version of the single-player campaign that's more difficult than the main one. And, in order to unlock it in Kirby's Dream Course, we have to obtain at least a silver medal on every course in the main campaign. And as you might remember, we kind of uh, fell short of that on courses 5 and 8. I went and took care of course 8 off-screen, scoring an 18 no less, which was just enough for a gold medal. And uh, we're finishing off course 5, this time, right here. And here is what happens when I'm not dealing with the Let's Play curse. A <laughs> 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 3, or a 21. That overturns the previous best score. And gets us the last silver medal we need. Great job! You got a silver or gold medal for all courses. Go to the title screen and look at the menu. And as proof, there you go. So if we check out the menu here, and you notice there's an option that says play extra course. But before we get into that, I'm going to be handling the extra course episodes differently in two specific ways. For one, we're going to be going over a uh, little extra fun fact of some kind about the game about some aspect we haven't explored of the game at the start of each episode. You know, since the extra mode has no new enemies or obstacles or hazards, uh, it could, the holes are going to go by a little quicker than uh, in the main campaign. So, uh, this will keep things a little interesting while keeping the episode from being a little inordinately short, you know? So in this episode, we're going to be going over something that we haven't actually checked out yet, the multiplayer. And as you notice, there is an extra course option for multiplayer as well. We unlock that by obtaining at least a bronze medal on every course in single player. So, versus mode plays a little differently than single player. While you're taking turns like a typical round of golf, your goal isn't to finish with the lowest number of strokes, it's to defeat the most enemies. Each hole gives you one set of enemies to fight over, and you get one point for every enemy you lay claim to, and two for being the first in the cup. But wait! You know those stars that get left behind whenever you kill an enemy? That serves an important purpose in Versus because you can steal points from your opponent by running over stars from enemies they defeated and claim them for yourself. Not something to fall back on though, so uh... Because your only way of recovering health is from still killing enemies yourself. So if you run out, you're forced to skip a turn while your opponent gets free reign to do whatever they want while you're just stuck there sleeping. Also unlike real golf, there is no such thing as a ball marker. Players can hit each other while they're standing around inactive. Colliding with your opponent makes the two of you switch copy abilities and ricochet off each other in ways that can really ruin your day. However, any attempts to play dirty or even damage your so-called friend for trying can be thwarted by using certain abilities like needle or stone which stay active while your opponent is taking their turn. So there is a way to stop your opponent from screwing you over. All in all, it's a bit of a different twist on the Dream Course formula, and it can be pretty fun if you have someone else to play it with. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to demo it for this playthrough because I have no friends, but who knows? Maybe there could be a side project of some kind down the line. Uh, so, some quick bits of additional info. There is one object that only appears in multiplayer. The day-night switch changes the current time of day on the course and switches control of all currently claimed stars, trading the number of points you've earned so far on the hole. You expect that kind of thing to be abused to hell and back, which is why each switch can only be pressed three times per hole before it deactivates. You'll find it most often on the Shine and Bright course, which is pretty predictable, let's be honest. There's also a unique enemy to be found in multiplayer. The Transformer enemy gives you a randomly selected ability when you kill it. 
And also, a little bit of a little fun fact. The Yellow Kirby, controlled by Player 2, actually got the name Kibi for the game. It's the only time the Yellow guy's ever gotten a name. Go figure, right? So, onward to the main event. You can use the exact same file as before with the extra mode that you use for your regular mode. And as you can see, we have no metal set for here. This is going to be all new. And even the world map has changed up a little palette-wise and sprite-wise. The, uh, the mode 7 background there doesn't work as well when they're trying to display the ground below than when there was clouds, but uh, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. So you see, the second thing that's going to be unique about extra mode is, uh, I don't have any notes for these holes. You see, all I'm going to be going off for this are the vague memories from my practice mode uh, of the game, my practice run uh, from a few months ago. And since I hardly remember anything from uh, when I was younger going through extra mode for whatever reason, uh, strap yourselves in because uh, we're going in mostly blind and I do not have a whole lot of confidence in my improv skills. Unfortunately, they still have the same little intro animations. So we get to watch Kirby fall just short of the cup in an all too familiar way. On one hand, it feels very familiar. On the other, not so much. The same general layout, but the enemies are very different. This Gordo sure wasn't here before, nor is this Twister or these Squishies. So we gotta find a way to use this ability to our advantage. And let's begin by using this, activating Tornado as soon as we bounce off here, and if we time this just right, spin around, we're gonna fall short. And a quick view of the scorecard shows us that uh, Gordo is not giving us any room for error here. So, we're going to have to tackle this very carefully. There we go. A nice two to start off. It ain't anything like the holes in one for days like we got the first time through here. But things are much more difficult this time around. Hole two is here. Man, we got a wispy sitting in the way here. And our last enemy is way up on top. That's not going to be very easy to get to. We're going to have to be kind of sneaky here. So what we could do, actually, to uh, better ensure it too, is aim for this arrow button, hit the kaboo, use tornado to reach that kaboo up there, and then use the second shot to uh, use an aerial shot to more precisely hit the first kaboo. Let's try it, shall we? Hopefully we don't get ourselves killed. Or we could just hit the kaboo with a full power shot anyway. We'll take that. Use tornado to... Are we gonna do it? No, too much. Yeah, it was worth a shot. It was it was worth a shot, but this is gonna be another nice and easy too. Pleasantly surprised so far. Which only means something is about to go catastrophically wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's hope not. Fingers crossed. On to hole three, and what do we have here? So that UFO is very promising. But uh I think it could be a little tricky. You see, uh, the way this hole is set up, we have enemies at two different elevations, and uh, UFO cannot change elevations unless it goes up or down a slope. So, uh, either we get a two here, or, well, actually, our best option is to go for the two. So, uh, how do we want to handle this? this? This might be a little difficult, actually. Perhaps if we, well, we can afford to take a bit of a risk here since we're not in a crunch to get good medals every time. I think perhaps if we boost, we might just be able to get enough uh, height to get on top of uh, that where the kaboo is. Let's hope so. No power. You know, in hindsight, I could have just activated UFO right at the start of the... Yeah, that could have gone better. Fortunately, we can afford to bounce off the wall. We're going to activate UFO in midair like we should have that first time. Unfortunately, we're going to get stuck with a three. If we time this right... Let's... Let's go with that. About a, half, about a moderate amount of power. We don't want to be going too fast. Turn around here. There. 
want to hit that rocky last because UFO is an overpowered assailability ability and we want to bring it into the next hole if at all means possible. So that was a little sloppy, but we made up for it pretty quickly and got an all right three. Whole lot of abilities to choose from here and some spikes, no less. So we got fireball, we got high jump. Hmm. So uh, of the two, we prefer to finish the hole off with high jump since we can control how much it goes, you know, since high jump always sends you at a set distance, you know, six squares. So we want to try and set this up so that we uh, go around here, hit fireball, turn around, hit the broom hatter, grab the star man, and then use high jump to land in the cup. And back from where that guy is to the southwest, one, two, three, four, five, six, that blue panel just northeast of Kirby is approximately where the cup is. So if we use high jump just a little before it, and we could bounce right up to it. It's not going to be easy, but let's try it out. Remember, UFO can only turn a 90 degree angle, so you want to aim in a direction either next, either parallel or perpendicular, yeah, geometry terms, to uh, where this flamer is set up. If we aim at a diagonal angle, we'll only move in diagonal angles, and our whole strategy will be thrown out the window. So we want to do this. Use average power. Remember to press left to turn counterclockwise. There's one, two, there's high jump. Line ourselves up. We're gonna hit the spikes, but oh well, because we are gonna bounce right in for a hole in one. I was almost afraid there. <laughs> wow. You see, once you kind of get a greater understanding of how this game's mechanics work, you can pull off some really neat stuff like that. Feels empowering as hell when you do it right. And feels completely debilitating when you screw it up. Am I right, guys? So, we got a bit of an unusual setup here. Starman way in the back and two squishies down here. So, what we want to do is basically uh, the original version of this hole in reverse. You want to hit that guy, go off the border, use high jump to uh, land on the downward facing slope here near the base of it so that we hit the squishy roll up to the top here where this where the cup will appear where the squishy currently is and if necessary use the arrow to uh, to head backward and land in it so where that squishy is one two three four five six the approximate square is the blue one on the slope facing Kirby we'll have to use it we'll have to use high jump just a little before that since we're gonna be uh, heading downward just a little so uh, yeah this could be interesting. With enough power, we will just bounce off the uh, we'll just bounce off the border, so we don't have to worry about that. High jump again. Use it now. Come on. Did not get it. Okay, this could be a little dicey. Instead, for the second shot, we are going to want to head this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, where that squishy is. So, right around where the squishy is, the one that we're aiming at, we want to use high jump. On our way back, that is. We want to use the arrow button to turn around. Wait for it. Fingers crossed. Got it! Nothing but net. And so we're doing surprisingly well so far. Ah, uh, yes, the parasol hole. You remember this one? We got the waddle doing in question here. A squishy down there, but uh, we're kind of in an inconvenient location, wouldn't you say? So, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to aim for that warp. If you notice, with average power, we will bounce right up to it and hopefully, uh, and hopefully land in a position where we can actually... Hmm, You know, this isn't quite as easy as it, as it initially seemed. Perhaps instead, well, I think our best course of action is going to be to do this, and then we're probably not going to not going to have a whole lot of power as we come down that slope, so if necessary, we'll use high jump to hit that squishy. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
We'd have to call it pretty early, though. Although we probably then we probably wouldn't have enough power to reach the uh, the waddle do and slide down the slope to uh, aim for the squishy where the cup will appear. So maybe our best course of action is to just not use an ability. And if we uh, land down here between the slopes, so be it. We'll just use the second shot. That's what we'll do. And that's how you strategize on the fly. There we go. Let's not boost to not screw up the trajectory here. Into the warp. Boost now. Not enough, but oh well. We're in a nice position. And so now we'll do this. Full steam ahead. <laughs> Hit it on the bounce. And slide down here. Aim this parasol just right. We're gonna end up just short. Mm. Overcompensated. So we'll just have to take the three. Almost got out of there. Not sure I was going with that. I think I meant almost. Almost uh, just missed. That would have been unfortunate. So it seems we're not going to be getting ourselves a gold medal, but we're very much in range for a silver. This one's going to be rather interesting. You see, uh, we got to do something about that kaboo before we uh, check out these areas down here, or else we're going to have to come back for it, and it's not going to be easy. So, what we're going to want to do is use an aerial shot. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see where it lands. Thanks, inability to see where a less than full power shot's going to go. We're going to need a little less than full power and then use backspin to double back. Hit the chili, skate across the water, and then set ourselves up for a birdie. So, without further ado, or something like that, let's do this. That should be about what we need. And it is. There's the chili. Skate across the water. Hmm. We may not have enough to get down that slope. This is awkward. So perhaps we could use just enough power to edge over the side of this and fall in. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Seven down, one to go, just like that. Fingers crossed, guys. Last hole coming up. And, of course, they gotta throw a curveball at us. We got a flamer here, of all things. A Togezo. Hmm. Although, we are lined up in a very interesting way. You see, what we could do is line our, is uh, use Fireball to charge forward, land, uh, bounce off the Wispy, double back, hit the Togezo, warp, use our continued momentum to hit the water switch, and then use Needle to stop on a slope right around this general area as needed. So uh, here's hoping that works, huh? Use it immediately. Off we go. There's the Wispy. Missed the Togezo entirely. I was afraid of that. This could be... wait, maybe not. Because what we could do is turn around and head right back into the warp. Then hit Fireball to go even faster. And now we'll be moving at an even greater speed. Probably should have boosted off the Wispy, actually. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Down we go. This is good so far. And there we go. And we are going to need a decently powered shot to get up this one. And if necessary, we can just use Needle to fall back in. I Yes! I was just waiting for him to stick just outside the cup. You know how Needle can be. Wow, can't believe how many things went right there. Let's hope that continues, huh? So, our final score, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, for a total of 18. And while that's not going to be enough for a gold, we'll take the silver. And this calls for a celebration. Ended up tying with Gordo, actually. I guess, uh, not sure why they counted us as well. I suppose they put us above him because it took us fewer rounds to get that score. So, one course out of the way, and as you can see, Extra Mode is not going to pull any punches whatsoever. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is going to get increasingly crazy as we go on. And so, next time on Let's Play Kirby's Dream Course, we head on to Extra 2. See you guys then.